These hills and valleys echo with the unspoken memory of great events and powerful teachings. This is where the Savior walked. Here he taught the gospel in its simplicity. Here the apostles received their commission to take his gospel to the ends of the earth. Some of his teachings and those of his apostles are preserved for us in the pages of the New Testament. As members of the church, we are counseled to read and study the scriptures. Each volume of scripture, the Old and New Testaments, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, the Pearl of Great Price, presents unique experiences and perspectives. Together, they contain the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. During the coming year, the Gospel Doctrine course of study will be the New Testament, the recorded history of the mortal life of Jesus Christ. Our purpose is to better understand the Savior's life and teachings and those of the early apostles. As we do so, we will be able to strengthen our testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ and follow his teachings and example with greater commitment. There are certain blessings that attend the study of the scriptures which are denied those whose studies and interests are in different fields. It is the study of the scriptures that enables men to gain divine guidance. It was a passage from the New Testament which first prompted Joseph Smith to seek divine guidance. That giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Never did any passage of scripture come with more power to the heart of man than this did at this time to mine. It seemed to enter with great force into every feeling of my heart. I reflected on it again and again, knowing that if any person needed wisdom from God, I did. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. In faith, that's the answer, to ask of God with real faith. And I will. I will. Then, because the hour had come for the ushering in of the dispensation of the fullness of times, and because he was the one chosen and foreordained to commence this work, Joseph received a direct answer to his request. But let us remember that the New Testament was the guidepost leading to the receipt of the first vision. Young Joseph read the New Testament because he had been taught by his parents to do so. Studying the scriptures can bring great blessings into the life of every church member. Brothers and sisters, what you just heard is true. Studying the scriptures can bring great blessings into the lives of every church member. The Sunday school is playing a major role in helping each member to achieve these greater blessings through understanding the scriptures better. Now, it was Thomas who asked the Savior the simple question, how can we know the way? And Jesus answered Thomas saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It is therefore imperative 
that we strengthen our testimonies of Jesus Christ. The church finds its basic strength in the testimonies of its members, the collective power of the individual testimony of Jesus, which is found in each member worldwide. And with this thought uppermost in our minds, we are most anxious to begin our 1987 study course on the New Testament because it teaches us about the life, the mission of the Savior Jesus Christ. I would like to invite Elder Tuttle, who in my opinion is one of the foremost teachers of the church, to share his thoughts about the Savior, our precious scriptures that testify of him, and their importance in our lives. Would you do that for us, Elder Tuttle? I'd be glad to respond, President. What you say about the importance of constantly strengthening testimonies is true. As with the Old Testament study this year, we will again be using the scriptures themselves as the classroom text during 1987. There is no better text than the scriptures. As Latter-day Saints, we need to develop our acquaintance with many more New Testament passages and teachings. We need to learn to use the words of the Lord more. The Lord's words are always better than our words in explaining gospel principles in teaching our children and in classroom discussions. As a people, we need a better acquaintance with New Testament happenings as well as key passages of Scripture. Not only that, we need to see the human side to the Son of Mary. We know that God the Father was His earthly Father as well as His heavenly Father. But it helps us to know that our exemplar was under the necessity of being subject to trials and difficulties similar to those we undergo as he filled his earthly mission. A special treat is in store for everyone who wants to improve his teaching ability. For we can see in these pages the master teacher using the best teaching methods without even calling attention to them. This, above all, characterizes him as the master teacher. Through our better acquaintance with these passages in the New Testament, we will come to understand the message of the master. We will understand more clearly his life and mission as we see them portrayed in the four Gospels, each one different from the other. Then as we read the Acts of the Apostles and Paul's letters, we will see how the church was established, also the human element and the drama associated with it has not really changed much in 2,000 years. There is so much to comment on. I conclude with just one more observation. Since we will be using the scriptures as our text, we will read the accounts of his atonement, how he suffered in Gethsemane, about his crucifixion and his suffering on the cross. We will discuss the importance of his resurrection. We can be there again at, as we visit his tomb with Mary and the other women early on the first day of the week to hear the angel announce these glorious words. He is not here, for he is risen. We become witnesses once again as the Spirit moves through these marvelous passages of Scripture, bearing witness that He truly resurrected. We will thrill to Peter's testimony, for instance, as he reaffirms our own witness. He testified that Jesus did resurrect. He was a personal witness. He saw Him with His own eyes. There are so many marvelous things to consume our study time next year. We hope that everyone will be motivated to study these lessons, participate in Sunday school, and then more fully live all of these teachings so that our children and our children's children will also come to understand and benefit through us. Jesus himself gave the best reason for studying the scriptures when he said, Search the scriptures. They are they which testify of me.
All of us search for direction. We ask, what shall I do with my life? The New Testament teaches that we are literally children of God, full of potential goodness. The Sermon on the Mount, the parables and other teachings of Jesus and his apostles help us learn the ideals of Christian living. The New Testament also provides us with the most detailed description of the events associated with the atonement. The atonement is the heart of the gospel. We can't fully understand the gospel until we understand the atonement and our part in it. The Gospel Doctrine class in Sunday School is one of the most important resources available to church members as they study the New Testament. A knowledge of the Gospel is important for all church members. This is especially true for parents and leaders. An understanding of the principle of the Gospel is essential if these individuals are to make inspired decisions regarding their stewardship. It is important that every leader every teacher, every mother and father understand the gospel. One important way to accomplish this goal is to attend the gospel doctrine classes. The First Presidency and the Council of the Twelve have directed that no other meetings be held during Sunday school time. In fact, with the rapid growth of the church and the great need for well-grounded leaders, the gospel study hour that we call Sunday school is more important than ever. Much effort has been made to provide the teacher, both in ward and in the home, with resources to enhance their lessons. The Meeting House Library houses these resources. It is a place where any ward or branch member can check out materials for a specified period of time for personal study or preparing their lessons for teaching purposes, whether in church or at home, or family home evenings. There are a number of resources available to supplement the New Testament course of study. These are available to teachers and families through the Meeting House Library, or they may be obtained directly from the distribution center. These materials can be used in the classroom for lesson enrichment, or by individuals and families for home evening lessons or scripture study. Let's take a close look at some of these resource materials. One picture, as we all know, can indeed be worth a thousand words. The Meeting House Library collection for the New Testament course of study is extensive. Recently, printed information has been added on the back of each picture, explaining the circumstances and background of each event depicted. Someone has said that the Bible makes the land come alive, and the land makes the Bible come alive. The setting of the Bible had a great effect upon the teachings found in the scriptures, for the land was the classroom of the Savior and his prophets. Their illustrations and many of the symbols they used to explain spiritual concepts came from their surroundings. These magnificent photographs of the Holy Land are reproduced on eight full-color posters, which can provide dramatic visual background for lessons. In addition to the map set, which is already available, two Holy Land satellite maps have also been developed. These are reproduced in full color from satellite photographs. Placed end to end, they offer a breathtaking view of Bible land locations and geographic features. A set of more than 300 slides depicting scenes from the life of the Savior, as well as actual locations, is also available. Each slide is described in detail and reference to the events which happened there. For example, this slide, number C32, provides a view of the Temple Mount, 
looking from the southeast. The explanation is found in the printed materials with key locations identified and numbered. Another exciting resource for teachers and families is the New Media Bible series, which brings portions of the Old and New Testaments to life in a new and meaningful way. The narration for this series is taken word for word from the King James Bible. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. The entire book of Luke is presented in this series, as well as portions of the Old Testament. This series provides more than 10 hours of inspirational viewing for families. Selected segments can also be used to supplement class presentations. When using them in the classroom, however, teachers should choose short excerpts to illustrate a point or event. The video should not take the place of the lesson. came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Kol hanikra bishmi yelech bichvodi baati yasati asiti gashena. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. <laughs> And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, 
Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. They ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. <laughs> and all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not. She is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat, and her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. 
And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never man before was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. saying, the Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way, and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Another film, Where Jesus Walked, is also available as a resource for families and the classroom. All of these materials are to supplement, not replace, individual and family study of the New Testament. This scripture study guide was developed as an aid to individual study. It outlines the Gospel Doctrine reading schedule for the year and includes questions to guide the reader.
An ongoing aid to teachers and students alike is the information presented in this section of the church news. The topics covered each week correspond to the Gospel Doctrine reading schedule. The Family Home Evening Planning Calendar is a tool to assist families in planning and implementing shared gospel experiences. It depicts scenes from the life of the Savior and features scripture quotations and references, quotations from general authorities, ideas for family home evening lessons, and an additional reminder of the New Testament reading assignments for the month. All of these materials are designed to foster the study of the scriptures with particular emphasis on the New Testament. By studying the scriptures, we can draw closer to the Savior so that we understand his teachings, feel the significance of his atonement, and resolve to follow his example. Brothers and sisters, we feel that personal testimony is really the foundation of this church. And that's really what Sunday School is all about, assisting people to improve their personal testimony and understanding of the Lord. Now, we as a presidency have testimonies to share with you, and I would like to invite Elder Komatsu and Elder Tuttle to share their testimony, and then I will follow with mine. Elder Komatsu. Thank you, President Simpson. My dear brothers and sisters, I bear you my humble testimony. From studying the gospel, I have found for myself, through the Holy Ghost, that the principles of the gospel are all true. I hope and pray that we will all study the gospel, study the scriptures, and attend our Sunday school classes, that we may be given that insight, that we may come to understand how a testimony really helps us. I know that God lives. I know that Jesus is the Christ. I know that Joseph Smith was the prophet of God. And today, at the head of our church, we have President Ezra Taft Benson as our living prophet. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Dr. Tuttle. Thank you, President. It's always a privilege to bear testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that he is the divine Son of God, that from his heavenly Father he inherited immortality or the power to live forever, that from his mother Mary he inherited mortality or the power to die. That's why he could atone for our sins. That's why he could resurrect. And that's why he is called the Son of God, to which I bear witness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Elder Tuttle. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to bear my testimony, for I know for an assurity that our Heavenly Father is in his place. He is so anxious for our success. He is so anxious to accomplish his work and his glory. And in order for that to happen, we need to apply ourselves and to learn about him, learn about his beloved son, and follow that pathway. I'm so grateful to my Heavenly Father for the experience that we brethren have had of sitting in that upper room and listening to the prophets through these past few years. Have they have taught us, as they have borne testimony to us, and as they have let us know about the vitality of this work. The entire church has been impressed by President Benson's recurring theme that everything we do must be by the Spirit. This has given each of us who are engaged in teaching a more urgent desire to live in accordance with the statement found in section 42 of the Doctrine and Covenants, where the Lord states that teachers of the church shall teach the principles of my gospel, which are in the Bible and the Book of Mormon, in the which is the fullness of the gospel. And they shall observe the covenants 
and church articles to do them. And these shall be their teachings as they shall be directed by the Spirit. And then he concludes, and the Spirit shall be given unto you by the prayer of faith. And if ye receive not the Spirit, ye shall not teach. As we incorporate President Benson's advice to teach by the Spirit with that of President Kimball, the combined message becomes a fitting theme for our day, that we do it by the Spirit. It is my testimony that teachers who teach by the Spirit truly have the capacity to make their messages live. It is my testimony that the fundamental principles of truth are taught most effectively when taught in their simplicity, just as the Savior himself taught. Too often we drown out the fundamental simple truths of the gospel as we become stilted or that in our teachings that we become too sophisticated. Sometimes we lean too, too heavily on man-made philosophies that tickle the ears but deny the faith. We must guard against that. It is also my testimony that a teacher needs to develop a feeling of confidence and trust with class members. All of this is based on love. There must be kindness. There must be patience. There must be understanding if teaching is to be at its best. In short, we must teach as the master taught with love unfeigned. Later on, we'll be privileged to witness one of the finest audiovisual aids of our day, the short film where Jesus walked. Not long ago, as Sister Simpson and I retraced the paths that Jesus walked, we paused at Gethsemane. We tried to capture, to some degree at least, the depth of his despair, the extremity of his pain, and also the importance of his impassioned plea, also almost in desperation. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. But most important of all, his triumphal resolve, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. We stood on the shores of Galilee and contemplated the simplicity of that kindly invitation extended to those disciples to be, as he said, come, follow me. And then, taking advantage of a teaching moment, he added, and I will make you fishers of men. This, in my opinion, was the master teaching at his best. In very deed, I bear my personal witness that these things are true. Our Father lives, and Jesus Christ is his Son and our Savior. He is also the head of this church. It's our privilege to live in a day of continuing revelation, as witnessed by President Ezra Taft Benson, a living prophet of God who shows us the way. May we recognize that way. May we teach that way. May we live that way, is my humble prayer. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.